Hey guys, welcome back to our show. We got a great one lined up for today. And before we get going, I want you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that like button if you like this video. Today, we're talking about some of the design features of a fire tube boiler and what makes them efficient. And we're doing it right now. So guys, as we're continuing to talk about efficiency, I wanted to discuss some features involved with the design of a fire tube boiler that essentially determine its efficiency. If you think that all fire tube boilers are the same and perform as such, then think again. A boiler's efficiency is not just determined by chance after it's manufactured. There are many engineered features in their designs that make them more or less efficient. A term you may often hear referenced is a pass. The number of passes of a boiler refers to the number of times that the combustion gases passes through the boiler. A two-pass boiler will have two opportunities as the hot combustion gases travel through and create this heat exchange. A three-pass boiler and a, uh, will have three opportunities and a four-pass and so on. You get the idea. The more passes, the lower the stack temperature will be. Now, as you may recall, the lower the stack temperature, then the more efficient a system is overall. And because the goal is to put those valuable BTUs to work and to not send them up the stack. Now there are may be applications still where a lesser pass designer are a better fit, but in terms of efficiency, the more passes, the more efficient. So another factor that helps to determine a boiler's efficiency is the design of the vessel itself. Fire tube boilers are configured in either a wet back or a dry back design. With the dry back design, the first pass it goes through the Morrison tube and is, then the heat is reflected off of the refractory field or dry back rear door where some of this heat will be lost. With a water back design, the first pass has an internal turnaround chamber surrounded by water. This water can then absorb this heat that is otherwise lost and so this makes the design for the wet back gain some efficiency points. Now each of these designs of course have their advantages and disadvantages However, from an efficiency standpoint, the water, water back design usually has the better reputation. Heating surface is exactly what it sounds like, the amount of real estate available for a heat exchange to take place inside the boiler. Heating surface within a fire tube boiler also helps to determine its efficiency as well. The heating surface is typically defined in square footage and in most designs follows a typical five square feet of heating surface per boiler horsepower. So for example, a 350 horsepower boiler will usually have 1,750 square feet of heating surface. This has become essentially a benchmark number for designing fire tube boilers that can achieve maximum efficiency while at the same time maintaining optimum life expectancy for the boiler. There are of course some variations to this design that have been made to meet other codes and standards, but this is kind of the typical number. An efficiently operating boiler will essentially pay for itself in fuel savings over its life versus inefficient systems. Replacing an aged boiler with a low maintenance, worry-free and efficient system could save your company thousands annually, not just on fuel, but also on maintenance costs. Choosing a replacement boiler hinges on many factors and efficiency is certainly one of these. Hopefully these design considerations can help you be a bit more informed when deciding what type of fire tube boiler may be the best fit for your facility. Now, if you're looking for either a new or a used fire tube boiler, be sure to give us a call as we have a large inventory of both and we are certain that, that we can find a design and a capacity to fit your needs. <laughs> 